Good morning all. In last lecture we have seen about the output characteristics and input characteristics of a transistor in common emitter configuration. Now we are here to study the various H parameters of a transistor. Before that I will uh, light on the curves of output characteristics of a transistor in common emitter configuration. This lecture is again for BSc Secondary Physics students, paper number 9, Basic Electronics. Here, output characteristics we have seen. Output characteristics is nothing but the relation between output current that is collector current and output voltage that is VCE. In this output characteristics, VCE is taken along X axis, whereas the output current collector current is taken along Y axis as collector current is a dependent quantity. This already we have seen. Now we see the nature of the graph, I mean curve. Here VC is taken along X axis, IC is taken along Y axis. This region is active region, this one is what saturation region and this one is what cut off region. In cut off region as VC is increased, there is no sudden improvement in collector current, no increase in current current. Collector current is also what very less. I mean about to zero. Uh, here as we increase the value of base current I mean input current when your input current is zero here the transistor is in what cut off region both the diodes I mean collector diode and emitter diode are in reverse bias. That's why there is no conduction of transistor. So this region is said to be what cut off region and as we increase the value of base current I mean input current then what happens there is a increase in collector current this we have seen here base current I mean input current is constant and how to put the input current constant and how to vary the collector emitter voltage that I will show you in figure there is curve between elect, uh, collector current and the collector voltage at constant base current is nothing but the output characteristics. When the base current is zero, the transistor operates in the cutoff region. In this region, both the junctions, I mean, both the diodes are reverse biased. Emitter diode and collector diode. The next the input is IB is increased from 0 to 0 microampere ampere to 20 microampere by adjusting the input voltage VBE. I will show you a figure. In figure you see this we can vary by using this potentiometer or rheostat this VBE. This potential difference across base and emitter is to be uh, adjusted by using this rheostat. So initially by keeping VBE 0 microampere, we measure what by varying the potential difference across this collector VCE, this we vary using this rheostat and here collector current is recorded. So what we have seen in first case in case of output characteristics is that whenever the base voltage, I mean emitter, base emitter voltage is suppose initially put to 0 microampere and if it is varied VCC, I mean collector emitter voltage is suppose varied by using VCC, then if collector current is noted, then it is noted that there is no increase in the collector current even though we vary what? VCE. Again we put constant this VBE by varying VBB. This power supply if we 
utilize your rheostat and by varying this or by changing the position of rheostat one can vary VBE. Then by varying this, I mean by keeping this VBB, VBE constant to 20 microampere and if it is again changed or if we increase VCE and corresponding values of IC, I mean collector current in milliampere are recorded. In the same way, again by putting or by keeping the constant VBE to 40 ampere by using this reverse that one can put at a constant value. Again vary this VCE with the help of this reverse stat. Collector current is recorded. Again put it instead of 20 it is to be kept constant for 40 microampere. VCC this using VCC we one can vary this VCE and collector current is recorded. As the VBE is raised, its value is suppose increased and by keeping such an increased value, if we vary this potential difference across collector and emitter, collector current is recorded and one what we have noted that whenever the value of VBE is higher, then there is a small change in VCE causes a greater or rapid change in collector implement, rapid increase in collector current. This we have seen in last lecture. Here it is given, after we keep 20 microampere output voltage VC is increased from 0 volt to, di to different levels. For each voltage level output voltage VC corresponding to output current IC is recorded and then curve is drawn between output current and output voltage at constant base current, I mean constant base voltage. This region is known as active region of a transistor. In this region, emitter based junction is forward bias and the collector junction is reverse biased. This step is repeated for fixed values of input current IV that is 40, 60, 80 and so on and we obtain different graphs. And when the output voltage VC is reduced to a small value, the collector based junction becomes forward bias. This because output voltage VC has less effect on collector base junction than the input voltage VB. As we know that emitter base junction is already power bias, therefore when both the junctions are power bias, the transistor operates in the saturation region. In this region, a small increase in output voltage VC will rapidly increase in the output current. This already we have seen. Remember, whenever question is asked in examination, Describe the output and input characteristics of a transistor. One has to draw this circuit diagram. Then we have to describe in detail and this nature of the curve we have to draw. Input, this is output curve. Input curve we have already seen in previous lectures. That curve we have to show in details so that one can easily obtain a good number in examination. So in this way, we have discussed in detail about the output characteristics of a transistor. Now we have here to describe or to study transistor parameters. Let's take first parameter that is input resistance Ri. We say sometimes dynamic input resistance or simply input resistance generated by Ri, suffix Ri. Dynamic input resistance is defined as the ratio of change in input voltage or base voltage to the corresponding change in input current that is base current with output voltage or collector voltage is kept constant. I mean by keeping the collector current uh, collector voltage constant if we take the ratio of change in base voltage base emitter voltage to the base current I mean input voltage to input current this ratio we obtain that is known as input resistance of a transistor. Dynamic input resistance of is defined as the ratio of change in input voltage or base voltage to the corresponding change in input current that is base current with the output voltage I mean with constant output voltage and one more thing is that in C configuration I mean in common emitter configuration the input voltage 
uh, input resistance is very very low. Why? Well, a base current is what more and VB is what less. This resistance is what very low. Second one is what output resistance R. Output from this formula you can know that you will know that change in what. Output voltage to change in output current whenever base current is constant. Such a ratio is said to be what output resistance. So, dynamic output resistance is defined as the ratio of change in output voltage to the corresponding change in input output current or collector. In C configuration, the output resistance is very high. This point we have to remember. Input resistance is very low and output resistance is what very high and last one is what current gain the current gain in a transistor in ce configuration is defined as the ratio of output current i mean collector current ic to the input current our base current ib so current gain alpha equal to ic upon ib collector current to base current Gain is current name itself says that is the ratio of two currents. What are those? Output current to input current. And you know as compared to base current, input current is, uh, as compared to base current, output current is what? More. The current gain of a transistor C configuration is defined as the ratio of output or collector current to the input current or base current. The current gain in transistor in C configuration is high. Therefore, the transistor in C configuration is used for amplifying the current. Here from this ratio or from these two terms IC and IB, you will come to know that surely IC is greater than what IB. As base current is you know very less because base is lightly doped in a transistor. That's why IB is less than IC. Had numerator is more, surely this value is what less. So denominator is less, numerator is more, so that in all this term, I mean current again becomes what very high. So because of high gain of a transistor in common amplifier, common emitter configuration, this configuration is utilized for utilized widely for different transistors operations like transistor as an amplifier. So because of high gain only this configuration is widely used in the industry for various applications of a transistor. Transistor in common emitter configuration is widely used in the industrial cases. It is because of only its high current gain. So, remember current gain is nothing but current gain in any amplifier, any configuration is nothing but ratio of two currents that is in common emitter amplifier, common emitter configuration, ratio of collector current to collect base current is nothing but current gain and it is what very high as compared to other two configurations common base and common collector configuration. So here we have arrived, we have arrived to the end of the common, common emitter configuration. Here common, configuration, uh, common emitter configuration we have seen in detail. A question may be asked in examination surely on this configuration. So, well prepared for examination. Wish you best of luck for your study and for your examination. Thank you. Remaining matter about common collector configuration, we shall discuss in next lecture. Thank you.